Good morning and welcome to day 10 of our study in 1 Peter. Um, we are diving right in. We're in 1 Peter chapter 2. We're going to be starting at verse 4 and going all the way through verse 8. So 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 4 through verse 8. We're going to start in verse 4. It says, Coming to him as, as to a living stone, rejected by men, but chosen by God and precious. Peter here is specifically talking about Jesus. Jesus being what we would call, and what he, he called himself, the chief cornerstone. The, 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 the stone that uh, the builders rejected. The, the one as, as an image of himself that uh, he was rejected by those who really should have based all of their worship and, found, and laid him as the foundation of their worship. Those Jewish religious leaders. They rejected him and they crucified him. They wanted nothing to do with him. And what he becomes in, in our faith is he really truly is that foundation by which we build our faith on. So he is that, that stone that was rejected, but he was the one that was chosen by God. And Peter uses a term that I really love in this particular passage to refer to Jesus. He is precious. And one of the things I want us to ask ourselves today is, is Jesus precious to you? Is he precious? Is he something that you look at and say, I desire him. I want to, to uh, uh, keep him. I want to protect him. I, I want to uh, just be around that all the time. He is precious to me. But then Peter also refers to us. He says, you also, in verse 5, he says, you also as living stones. And I love that term as well, because we, we are, in a spiritual sense, when we're born, we are spiritual rocks. We are good for almost nothing. And really, when it comes down to it, Christ and our, our faith in Christ, what does it do? It, it does what Peter says it does. It makes us into living stones it's something beyond a typical rock you know you can't you can sit and try and have a conversation with a rock i mean there there was a fad many many years ago about having pet rocks but you know really that rock is never going to respond to you it's never going to actually have a conversation with you and if it does you might want to call your doctor because if rocks are talking to you you might have an issue however Peter calls us living stones. Uh, you also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. See, together, as, as believers in Jesus Christ, as children of God, as those who have place their faith and trust in Jesus as their Savior, we are being built together to be a spiritual house. We talk about church all the time, and a lot of times the, our mind's imagery for church goes into the building itself, that the church is the building. And I know you've heard this many times before probably, in the sense that the church is not the building, the church is the people. It is very much us. And Peter is giving us this imagery as, while yes, we may meet in a building, the church itself, the body of believers, the ones built on the foundation of that chief cornerstone, we are the church. And what are we built for? Well, we're built to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. We are built to come together as believers so that we can worship God. That's the whole point. We are here to bring glory to God, to give that sacrifice over to Him, to, to praise Him, to worship Him. And what that requires for us, and I know this is strange because we seem to be so separated in this time of, of quarantine and isolation. Uh, the need to come together, and I hope that even in this time of isolation, that more so now, you are feeling the true desire and need to come together. 
that you truly miss that because that is what God designed the church to be is a group of believers who come together to build this spiritual house worthy of worship that's why we come together that's why we're doing all of this in this building we're trying to be this spiritual house that is built on a foundation of our chief cornerstone he says in verse 6 therefore it is also contained in scripture behold i lay in zion a chief cornerstone elect and again he says precious and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious. He says it again. He is precious to us, or at least he should be precious to us. But to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Despite all of their efforts to try and, and, and pull Jesus down to to destroy him to destroy his message and, and all the efforts of Satan to to um, thwart salvation and everything that Christ was trying to do they, they tried to do that and he becomes the chief cornerstone he literally became the foundation on which everything that we know and have faith in is built on and it says in verse 8, it says, And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, they stumble being disobedient to the word, to which they were also appointed. <clears throat> I like this because this is really, in a way, it's a challenge for us. Because what is the stone of stumbling? What is the rock of offense? What is it that they trip over in their unbelief it's the gospel itself it's the gospel itself and it's hard for us uh, to uh, to understand and sometimes it's really it's really hard for us as we relate the gospel to other people we turn we have a tendency to turn people off when we share our faith we, we turn people off by how we respond to the sin in our world the thing of it is we're not called, you and I are not called to be the rock of offense. We're not stones of offense. We're not the ones who are be, to be the ones that these, these who uh, don't believe trip over. It's the gospel itself. We're not supposed to be a stumbling block. It's already enough that the gospel is a stumbling block. Why is the gospel a stumbling block? Well, the gospel causes many people to trip up. Even, even us, before we believed, it caused us to trip up because it starts with a particular premise. It starts with the premise of you're wrong and you're a sinner. That's something that a lot of people don't want to deal with. And I think even before you came to know Christ, it was an issue that you really didn't want to deal with either. That's the rock of offense. That's the stumbling block. But when we as believers, as those living stones, when we become that stumbling block, we make it harder for people to come to know Jesus Christ, to come to, to becoming one of those living stones, to joining us in building this spiritual house to the worship of God. May we never be a stumbling block to the the message of the gospel let the gospel speak for itself you don't need to tell people that they're sinners the gospel will do it for you you just need to relay the truth of God's Word if you don't trust in the fact that God will reach people's heart in his own words then you don't have enough faith in the God that you said saved you we still need to be witnesses. We still need to reach out to people. But we need to be sharing his word and not our words, not our opinions. We need to put that out there. Let, let the gospel be the thing that either wins them to Christ or is what judges them in their disbelief. Don't be the reason why someone refuses to come to Christ. Let's close in a word of prayer for today. Our God and our Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for the word. We thank you, Father, that 
even though the gospel for us sometimes is hard hard to accept you started out with a premise of telling us that we were wrong that we we made the mistakes but god more than that i'm thankful even in my own life that i didn't trip over that and i didn't stay in my unbelief i thank you for picking me up for showing me my need of a savior and God, I pray that each and every one of us, that our true focus and our heart's desire is to lead other people to Christ, not through our opinions, not through what we would like to see the world become, but through your word, so that the, the desire of those people's hearts wouldn't be for us or a particular religion, but it would be for a relationship with you, that they would build the foundation of their lives on the chief cornerstone. We just pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. See you next time.